jungle, woods, savannah, shrub. Wherever you are in the world, trees are a wonderful thing. And yet, you're likely to have heard a figure along the lines of... Did you know an area the size of Wales is deforested every year? And you might think, how many whales are we talking about here? One big one? Five small ones? How many whales to a hectare? Alas, what they usually mean by this is Wales the country, one of the four members of the United Kingdom that incorporates just over 20,000 square kilometres. But hang on, can this be true? And what exactly does it mean for us if it is? In fact, for the last decade, there's been a net loss of forests of around 50,000 square kilometres, which is roughly two and a half whales. Now, this may seem like an alarming rate to be losing the world's forests, but let's put it into context. Forests cover around 40 million square kilometres of the planet, which is about the same as the surface area of the moon. If we do the maths, it says that we have over 750 years left of forest. Right then, so we can just relax. There's plenty of forest left. We can leave it up to our great, 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 great grandkids to fix the problem. Unfortunately, like with most things in life, the answer isn't so simple. If we look at this map, you can see that the biggest areas of deforestation are occurring in countries that host the world's tropical forests. It is this phenomenon which is one of the most concerning ecological issues facing the planet right now. Firstly, the tropics are diverse on a scale that beggars belief. Making up only 5% of the world's land surface, they contain way over half the world's biodiversity, with hundreds of thousands to perhaps millions of plant, animal and fungal species that are seen nowhere else on the planet. But it's not just biodiversity. Around 1.6 billion people live within or beside them, speaking over half the world's languages. So both culture and biodiversity are threatened by the loss of trees. Secondly, Forests are pivotal in the world's carbon cycle, absorbing around a third of human-induced emissions annually. And within this, tropical forests represent the fastest naturally occurring carbon stores on the planet. However, when forests are failed by slash and burn techniques, most of the carbon that's stored in the wood is released back into the atmosphere. And currently, 16% of all CO2 emissions annually come from clearing of trees. Thirdly, weather. Tropical rainforests are powerhouses in the world's weather patterns due to their capacity to transmit huge amounts of water into the atmosphere. It is forecast that reductions in the world's tropical rainforests will lead to an increase in both frequency and duration of drought in many parts of the globe. And finally, soils. Tropical soil systems are often shallow and nutrient poor. Tree roots are able to hold the soils together tightly, allowing the soil to carry large amounts of water within it. Also, Canopies of the rainforest reduce the amount of heavy rain hitting the soil. When trees are cleared off the land, the heavy rains and reduction in soil water capacity leads to rapid nutrient runoff until the soils become entirely void of nutrients and soil bacteria, preventing any crops from growing after as little as three years. This can be seen by the fact that by 1990, three quarters of all deforested land in the Amazon was cleared for agriculture, yet a third of this had already been abandoned due to collapses in soil quality. So, we have losses to both biodiversity and culture, accelerating climate change, affecting the world's weather cycle, and degradation of soils. Why do we do it? Why do we cut down trees? Well, we'll explore this and more in part two, so stay watching.